Hi guys, uh, Ms. Bergen. Um, we are gonna be going over the chapter seven review. Uh, so that is what we will be doing. Um, please understand when you are giving me your pictures of this, I do wanna see not just the answers, but I wanna see all the work that I am doing with you. Um, so don't just give me answers on this. I want to see the work that I am doing with you. So I know that you are doing it with me and you are um, attempting it that way. Um, if you're just writing down the answers, that's not really truly showing me that you're like really understanding it. Um, so I need to see that you guys are doing the work with me. That is part of this, uh, the points for this. Also, you're gonna have a quick mini quiz, um, like mini, mini. Uh, there's probably maybe two, three questions max. Um, on this, so you can just, I'm not gonna release that probably right away. Um, so I'll probably release that sometime later this week. Um, and then you guys can just turn in that quick mini quiz as well um, for points on that. And then I'm gonna be moving on to chapter eight, which we do need to do because we are seriously behind. Um, so, I'm going to flip this around now and start the chapter review. Again, please show me all the work that I am doing with you right now. So Miss uh, Mrs. Williams is organizing her office supplies. There are three open boxes of paper clips in her desk drawer. Each box has seven eighths of the paper clips remaining. How many boxes of paper clips are left? Shade the model to complete the calculations below to show how much, how you found your answer. So remember it says each box has seven out of the eight remaining. So um, therefore I'm going to be shading seven of the eight on this one. And then here they said seven of the eight to both, to all three of these actually. So I'm gonna do it again over here and then again over here. Okay, so I just went and did seven eighths uh, of each one. Now we can go ahead and figure out what that comes out to be. So, um, you should know to put a one under it, and then you could just simply go across because there is no cross canceling that could happen. So your answer would have been 21 over eight. And could you have that as an answer? No, you cannot. So I'm going to do how many eights go into 21? Um, that would be uh, two times. That would be 16. Can I have one and take away uh, six? No, I cannot. So then 11 minus six is five. So therefore my answer would be two and five eighths. So my answer would be two and five eighths. All right, now down here. Uh, Diana worked on her science project for five and one third hours. Gabe worked on his science project one and one fourth times as long as Diana and Paula worked on her science project three-fourths of the times as Diana. You're gonna select whether it's true or false statement um, for each one. So, um, therefore, I'm gonna write over here D for Diana. She did five and one-third hours. Then it says G for Gabe was um, one and one-fourth times as much as Diana, which is five and one third. And then Paula um, was three fourths of Diana. So three fourths times Diana, five, Diana is five and one third. All right, so now we're, now that we know that, now we can go ahead and do this. Diana worked longer on her science project than Gabe worked on his science project. Mm -hmm. Well, this is Diana, and then Gabe worked this much. Well, look at, they 
both have five and, and one third hours, but Gabe has to times his by one and one fourth. So is this going to come out to be uh, greater than, less than, or equal to five and one third? Well, you should be saying that it should come out to be greater because I am multiplying by a fraction that is larger than one whole. So therefore, did Diana work longer than Gabe? This is a false statement. She did not uh, work longer. Paula worked less on her science project than Diana worked on her science projects. Let's go over here. Um, Paula worked less than Diana. Well, this is again, Diana. So to find Paula, I would take Diana's and times it by three fourths. So should my answer come out to be less than five, five and one third, greater than five and one third, or equal to five and one, five and one third hours? Well, if you are multiplying by three fourths, that is smaller than one whole. So therefore your answer should be less than, and then this one would be greater. So therefore did Paula do less than Diana? Um, she sure did. So this is a true statement. Next, Gabe worked longer on his science project than Paula worked on her science project. All right, so Gabe worked longer than Paula. So if you look here, they both have the same number, five and one third, but just one is being times by one and one fourth, and then Paula's is just times three fourths. So therefore, which one was bigger is going to be longer. So since Gabe did do uh, a multiply by something that is larger than one and one fourth, he did go and work longer. So um, Gabe worked longer on science project than Paula. And this is a true statement as well. Now, this one says Gabe worked longer on his science project than Diana and Paula combined. All right, so now they're saying that Gabe worked more than Paula and uh, Diana combined. So let's go ahead and we have to solve for that to figure that out. So um, what I would do is I had to figure out what Gabe's is and then um, I'm gonna take Gabe and I'm gonna subtract off um, Paula and Diana's time. And we'll see if this is even possible. We're gonna compare Gabe's versus um, Paula and Diana's. So we already know what Diana's is, five and one third, and plus Paula's. We gotta solve for Paula. So here again, we should just change this to improper fraction. This one is not, does not need to be changed, but this one does. So that would be 15 plus one is 16 over one, which comes out to be, can anything cross cancel? It sure can. Four can go into 16 four times. So three times four is 12 over one, which is 12. So then, Oh, hi, I'm so sorry. I was like, wait, that just doesn't make any sense because I forgot to put down my uh, mixed, I'm sorry, my denominator. So that was my fault. The denominator is three. So now if you do that, that would be um, three. So now how many threes go into 12? That would be four hours. So I'm sorry, it is four hours plus five and one third. Well, when you add that four hours plus five and one third, that would be nine and one third hours. So now we got to figure out what Gabe's comes to. Um, Gabe, we would have to do one and one fourth times five and one third. So you should be changing these to improper fractions. Um, don't make the mistake I did and forget about the denominators. So bring down your denominators. All right, four times one is four, plus one is five. Then this one would be uh, three times five is 15, 
plus one is 16 thirds. So now you can see if you can cross cancel anything, a four can go into 16 four times. So now you can just multiply across, that would be 20 over three. And um, I am going to divide that to see what that comes out to be. How many threes can go into 20? Um, it would be six times which is 18, and then when you subtract, that'd be two left over. So therefore my mixed number here would be six holes and two thirds hours. So um, did Gabe work longer on his project, which was six and two thirds hours, than Diana and Paula combined, which came out to be nine and one third hours. So did he do more than both of them together? And you should be saying, no, that is false. <clears throat> so we are not going to do number three. So now we're going to go on to the next one. On um, this one, I'm only more worried about uh, 4D. So this is all I want you to answer on 4D. So let's go ahead and do that. Franny put um, two thirds of her music collection on an mb3 player while on vacation she listened to three-fifths of the music on her player how much much of franny's music collection did she listen to while on vacation so therefore it says she put on two-thirds on her player and then she only listened to three-fifths of the music so three fifths of the music, or you could put three fifths over here. It really doesn't matter. Now, can anything cross cancel here? Um, yes, a three can go into three one time. They cancel each other out to be ones. So then when you go across, um, you would have had two fifths, and then that would have been your answer. Also, the other thing you could have done is it went across um, because here it says Franny listened to how much of her music collection while on vacation, and that's what the answer was. Now, you could have also had gone across and said six over 15. The issue with this is that none of these have six fifteenths. Now, there are two ways to go about doing this. First of all, um, you could have saw, okay, can a 10 go to 15? And you cannot multiply something by 10 to get it to 15. So therefore that one is going to be automatically out. But can I do a, can I do something to five to get it to 15? Um, yes, I can. I can times it by three. So then if I'm timesing that one by three, I got to times the top by three. And three times three, does that equal my um, six? And then this, it does not, it goes to nine. So therefore it can't be this. Um, but if you did this one, can how, what do you do to a five to get it to 15? You times it by three. So then you times the top by three. And is that gonna give you your six fifteenths? And yes, that does. So that is one way you could go about doing it. The other thing that you could have done is you could have saw, um, can anything, um, other than one, um, you can write down all of the factors of six. So one and six, and then two times three. All right, so then now you can go and see one is not going to change anything. So you can automatically eliminate that. Can a six go into six? Yes, but can it go into 15? And that is a no. So that's not going to work. Can a three go into six? Yes. Can a three go evenly into 15? And that is also yes. So therefore here, I can divide both the top and the bottom by three. So how many threes go into six? That would be two. How many threes go into 15? That would be five. So I'm still getting two fifths again if I reduce it down. So um, to be honest, this is probably my best one is to see which one will get to my answer um, by multiplying, but that is totally up to you. Um, that's again why cross canceling does help us out. 
it's totally up to you how you go about solving for that. Number five, it says Logan bought 15 balloons. Four fifths of the balloons are purple. How many balloons are purple? So it says he bought 15 balloons. Then it says four fifths of the balloons. Remember, of means time. So you're going to do four fifths of the balloons. It does not matter if four fifths is over here and 15 is over here because remember the commutative property allows you to do both. So now um, you should be putting it over one. Can anything cross cancel? One can go into four, but that's just four times. But can five go into 15? That is yes. Five can go into 15 three times. So then when you go across, um, three times four is 12 over one. So that is 12 purple balloons. Next, Kayla walks three, three and two fifths miles each day. Which of the following statements correctly describes how far she walks? So, so mark all that apply. So this is what she does for one day. So now it says Kayla walks 14 and two fifths miles in four days. So we have to figure out if this is true. How am I going to find out if this is true? Well, I would have to go ahead and times um, what she does a day, which is three and two fifths uh, is one day, but it's saying now figure out what four days is worth. And they're saying my answer should come out to be 15 and two fifths. So we're going to see whether this is true or not. So this one would be four over one. You should change this to an improper fraction as 15 uh, plus two is 17 over five. Um, so now I'm going to see if anything cross cancels. It does not. So now I got to do 17 times four. Uh, that'd be 28 carrier two. Again, if you don't know this, seven times four, just do repeated addition. Uh, four times one is four plus two is six. So this one would be 68 over five. And can I have that as an answer? I cannot. So now how can, how many fives go into six? That would be one. One times five is five with one remaining. Check it. I am good. So I'm going to bring down my next number. How many fives go into 18? Uh, five goes into 18 three times. That would be 15 with uh, three left over. So my answer should have been 13 and three fifths. And that is not what I got. So therefore, this does not work out. Now they're saying, all right, well, she did seven days worth of walking. Um, it should be 23 and four fifths. So I'm going to check that one as well. So three and two fifths times seven days now. So now um, I'm going to change this to an improper fraction, which I already know what the answer is because I've did it down here. And then I'm going to times it by seven over one. Nothing can be cross canceled. So then I'm going to do 17 times um, seven. Seven times seven is 49, carry your four. Seven times one is seven plus your four is 119. So now it's 119 over five. So now I got to go ahead and divide. How many fives go into 119? Can five go into one? No, can it go into 10? Yes, twice, that would be 10. Subtract, that would be one. Check it, we are good. Bring down your nine. How many fives go into 19? That would be three. Three times five is 15, subtract it. That would be four. So my answer to this one is 23 and four fifths. So that would be 23 and four fifths. And was that what we had? Yes, it was. So this is a true statement. Next, they're saying if you uh, did 10 days, it should come out to be 34 miles. So let's go ahead and check that again. Um, so now we're doing three and two fifths times 10 now. So still, when you change this to improper fractions, still 17 over five times 10 over one. Can anything cross cancel? Yes, a five can go into 10 two times. Then go ahead and go across. 
what is 17 times 2? 7 times 2 is 14, carry your 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So this one would be 34 over 1, which is also known as 34 miles. So is that what was said? Yes, it was. So I'm going to, that is another one that is right. Now they're saying if you did 31 days. Okay, so now I have to do 3 and 2 fifths times 31 now. So when I do this, this would be 17 fifths times 31 over 1. And then this is where there is no cross canceling that could happen again. So now I'm actually forced uh, to solve this. So I'm going to go ahead over here and multiply across um, times it by 7. So 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 3 is 21. Then I'm going to bring down my 0. Um, then 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So now I add, that would be 7, 2, and 5. So 527 over 5. And can I have that as an answer? No, I cannot. So I'm going to divide this out. Five can go into five one time. That comes out to be zero, bring down your two. Can five go into two? No, it can go into zero times. So then I'm gonna bring it down. That would be two remaining now, which is still smaller. Bring down our seven now. How many fives will go into 20? Seven, that would be five times with two left over when you subtract those. So my answer would be 105 and two fifths. 102 and two fifths. So no, this is not right either. So therefore, it was only B and C to make this true. Okay, next thing. Um, they want to know, write each multiplication um, expression uh, in the correct box. So they want to know which one is going to be equal to four-fifths, which one is going to be greater than four-fifths, and which one is going to be less than four-fifths. So I'm going to get out my highlighter again. Um, this number is the same on all of these. So the only thing that's going to determine it is the other fraction. So um, remember this, they want equal in this box, greater than in this box, and then less than in this box. So if I'm going to take four fifths, and I'm going to times it by one and one eighth, is my answer going to be equal to four fifths, greater than four fifths, or less than four fifths? Well, you guys should be saying greater than because um, it just multiplied by a number that is bigger than one whole. So therefore, you're going to want to put that in this box. So four fifths times one and one eighth would have been right here. <clears throat> Next, uh, the thing that's going to determine it is the one third. So if I take one third and I times it by four fifths, so it should it be equal to four fifths, greater than four fifths, or less than four fifths? Well, you should be saying it is less than um, because one third is less than one whole. So then there's that one. Now this one, I would times by three. So if I'm timesing four fifths by three, should my answer be greater than four fifths, equal to four fifths, or less than four fifths? And you should be saying greater because you are multiplying by something that is larger than one whole. This is where a lot of kids go wrong. Um, a lot of kids get this one wrong. You look here at this and you say, okay, so what is the answer in this case? Um, if I multiply by four fifths by four fifths, would my answer be equal to, greater than, or less than four fifths? Now, a lot of kids want to say equal because they are the same thing. 
But in all actuality, what is four fifths? Is four fifths less than a whole, greater than a whole, or equal to one whole? So in this case, four fifths is actually, um, when you're talking about fifths, one whole would be five over five. But in this case, if it's four fifths, it's actually less than one. So therefore, my answer should come out to be less than. Next, eight over eight is what is gonna determine it. Well, eight over eight is just another way of saying one whole. So if I'm gonna take one times four fifths, my answer should come out to be four fifths. So therefore my answer should be equal because I just multiplied it by eight over eight which is one whole. Here, um, you would look at two over two. Well, two over two is again, another way of saying one whole. So in this case, um, it is again going to be equal to four fifths because two over two is one whole. All right, I am going to be skipping number eight. We're gonna go over to number nine. It says here um, in fifth grade class, four fifths of the girls have brown hair. Of the brown haired girls, three fourths of them have long hair. Of the girls with long hair, one third of them have green eyes. So what they wanna know is what fraction of the girls in the class have long brown hair? That's what they wanna know. So we have to go back in. It is saying four fifths of the girls have brown hair. Okay, that's something that we need to know. Of the brown haired girls, three fourths of them have long hair. So, um, and then this one is telling us green eyes, which we do not wanna know here. So therefore, in order to solve this, we would have to do four fifths times three fourths. Can anything cross cancel? It sure can. The force can cancel out to be ones now. So then when you go across, that would be three fifths. So your answer would be three fifths have long brown hair. Now it says what fraction of the girls in the class have long brown hair and green eyes. So we already found out what long brown hair was. That was three fifths of the girls. So now to find out what is long brown hair and green eyes, we would have to go over there. Of those girls with long brown hair, one third of them have green eyes. So now we have to do one third of the long brown haired girls. So then here, can you cross cancel anything here? You sure can, a three and a three can cross cancel. And then that would be one over five. So then my answer would be one fifth. One fifth of the girls have long hair and green eyes. Okay, next. All right, here we go. This one um, is, says Caleb's family room has dimensions shown. He needs to show that the area of the room so he needs to know how much carpet to buy. Complete the area model below to find the area of the family room. Now remember family room um, is a rectangle. Remember the area of a rectangle, you would do um, five and one fourth, which is the length times the width, which is three and seven eighths. Now, why do I want you guys to do this one? Because yes, I know you guys could also change these to improper fractions, um, but sometimes they'll give you a model like this on the state test and you're gonna need to know how to do that as well. So that is truly why I'm doing that. Um, so in this case, uh, you could do it both ways to kind of solve it and see what it comes out to be. Um, so times a plus, that would be 21 over four times over here. 
is, uh, that would be 24 plus seven um, is 24 plus seven comes out to be 31 over eight. So this is very big. Um, so there is nothing to cross cancel. And this is probably why they didn't do it this way. Um, but you could also solve it like this if it were a problem, just saying what is the area, but you would have to multiply across with both of these because there's nothing to cross cancel. And then you would have to divide it out. But in this case, that is probably why they didn't say use any method. That's probably why they want you to use just this method. So um, in order to do this, you have to separate out five and one fourth, and then the same with three and seven eighths. So five and one fourth is really just saying five holes plus uh, one fourth. And then three and seven eighths is really saying three holes plus seven eighths. So then that is what they wanted you to do up here. Five plus one fourth, and then um, three plus seven eighths. And then they wanted you to go ahead and do the multiplication behind it. So remember to solve for this, you would do five times three for this part. Five times three is 15. So that is the answer for that section. Then to solve for this section, um, you would do three times one fourth. So three times one fourth, if you want to put it over one, would have looked like that, which would have been three fourths. So three fourths is that little section. Then you come over here. In order to solve for that section, you would have to do um, seven eighths times five, which um, would have been 35 over eight. How many eights go into 35? That would be four with three remaining. So that would be four and three eighths would be that section. And then this section would be one fourth times seven eighths, which would be seven over 32. So this is what it would come out to be. Now, in order to solve for this, remember um, you must then add all the circled sections because this plus this plus this plus this will equal the entire area of everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is 15 plus four holes and then three eighths plus three fourths plus seven over 32. So can I add up these fractions as they are? You should be saying no, because the denominators are not the same, but I can get an eight and a four up to 32. So I already found a common denominator. I'm gonna times these by four to get it to 32. Um, so this is still, if I look at just um, this part that is saying 15 plus four is 19. So this is actually gonna be 19 holes. Now we just gotta change out the fractions. So that would be 12. Then here, um, I'm gonna times this by eight and this by eight. So that would be 24 over 32. And then this one would be seven over 32. So now I can add these, uh, 24 plus 12 plus seven. So seven plus four is 11 plus two is 13, carrier one. Uh, that would be 43 over 32, which can you have that as an answer? No, you cannot. So you have to separate these. Um, there was nothing wrong with 19 holes, but there is an issue with uh, 43 over 32, so how many 32s will go into 43? That would be once. Subtract it, that would be um, 11. So therefore, your answer would be one and 11 over 32.
So when you add this together, it's actually gonna be 20 and 11 over 32. Is the answer to that. Or you could have just have multiplied across and then multiplied this across and then divided 32 by whatever the product of this was. And you're gonna get 20 and 11 over 32 as well. All right, so next, Doreen lives three fourths of a mile from the library. Sheila lives one third as far away from the library as Doreen. Uh, for these next questions, choose yes or no to each question. Um, so Doreen, does Doreen live farther from the library than Sheila? Remember, this is Doreen is three fourths. Okay. Um, but Sheila is one third of Doreen. All right. So let's solve this. Does Doreen live farther from the library than Sheila? So this is Doreen, three fourths of a mile. Well, Sheila is three fourths times one third of that. So um, what is going to determine whether this is bigger or smaller is the other fraction. Since this one is smaller than one whole, um, it is less than, so then my answer should be less than three-fourths. So Doreen is three-fourths of a mile. Sheila is less than three-fourths of a mile. So does Doreen live farther from the library than Sheila? The answer is yes, she is. Does Sheila live one-fourth of a mile from the library? So in order to solve this, I would have to go ahead and multiply this out. Can anything cross cancel? Yes, threes and the three can cross out to be ones. And then you can go across that be one over four. So that would be one fourth of a mile. So does Sheila live one fourth of a mile from the library? This is a yes statement. Next, does Sheila live twice as far from the library than Doreen? So does she live twice as far than Doreen? So Sheila lives one fourth. And then if you said twice as far, that means times it by two, um, that would be two over four, which is also a half. So are these the same? Um, and that is a no, they are not the same thing. All right, next it says, uh, Twaniqua took a test that is 20 multiple choice questions and 10 true and false questions. She got nine tenths of the multiple choice questions correct, and she got four fifths of the true and false questions correct. So, how many multiple choice questions did Twaniqua get correct? So, again, if you come in, we're just talking about the multiple choice in this question. So this is talking about multiple choice and this one is two. So um, we have to figure out what nine tenths of the multiple choice, which is 20. Can anything cross cancel? It sure can. Uh, 10 can go into 20 twice. So then if you go across, that would be 18 over one, which is 18 multiple choice questions. Here, um, you're going to look at true and false questions. So this is uh, 10. And then this one is also talking about the true and false questions. So four fifths of 10. Can anything cross cancel? It sure can. Five can go into 10 twice. So then this would be four times two is eight over one, which is eight true and false questions. So that is the answers to those. Um, this one says uh, the table shows how many hours some of the part time employees at the toy store worked last week. So here's Conrad, Giovanni, and Sally. This week, Conrad worked one and three fourths times as long as last week. Then it says Giovanni worked one and one and one 
one and one third times as long as last week. And then uh, Sally worked two and three, two thirds the number of hours that she worked last week. Uh, match the each employee's name with the number of hours that they will work this week. So this was last week's chart, and now it's telling you to find this week. So Conrad worked, um, Conrad worked one and three fourths times what he did last week. This was last week. So that was six and two thirds. And then we'll talk about Giovanni as well. Giovanni did, um, will work one and one third times as many as he did last week. Last week was nine and a half. All right, so we're gonna worry about these. We don't really have to do the third one because that is just gonna be the answer, the other answer than these. So um, first thing I should do is I should change these to improper fractions. Um, so that would be four plus three is seven fourths times um, 18 plus two, that would be 20 over three. Can anything cross cancel here? Yes, four can go into 25 times. So then that would be 35 over three. So um, how many threes go into three? That would be one. And then that would be nothing remaining, which now I can bring down a five. How many threes go into five? Uh, that is only once. One times three is three with two remaining. So therefore my mixed number would be um, 11 whole hours. And then the fraction part is two thirds. So which one is showing that um, is right there. So I'm gonna draw a line to Conrad to 11 and two thirds. Now let's solve for this one. Um, it says uh, here you would do, well, you know what, to be honest, you could do um, several things to this. You don't even have to really solve at this point um, because this was what Giovanni did last week. Um, so this was nine and a half hours. And then he did one and one time, one and one third times as much. So should my answer to this become bigger or smaller than nine and a half hours? Well, mm. it should definitely be, um, it should definitely be bigger. So therefore the one that's showing bigger is this one. So therefore that automatically tells you what the answer is going to be. And then also Sally did two thirds of what she did last week. Well, two thirds of 10, 10 hours is gonna be something that is smaller than 10 hours. So the only one that shows that is the seven and one sixth. So though that is how you could solve those. All right, now it says Peggy is making a quilt using panels that are a half foot by a half foot. The quilt is five and a half feet long and four feet wide. Let each square on this grid below represent a half foot by a half foot. Draw a rectangle on the grid to represent the quilt. So it's telling you that each one is a half. Now there are a couple ways to go about doing this. So you can go by halves until you can get to either four or five and a half feet. So if I went to five and a half, I could do a half plus a half, that's only one whole, plus another half, that's one and a half. Now keep going, that is now two whole feet. And remember, you need to get one that is five and a half feet long. Well, my advice to you is that I would tell you to change these two halves. Um, how many halves would that be? Well, we're just gonna change that over and then we would just do times and plus. So five times two is 10 plus one is 11 halves. So really five and a half feet is actually 11 halves. So to save our time, save us time here, all we have to do is just count 11 of these out. So one, this is two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that is ends right here. That's eleven halves right there. So that is the five and a half um, side. Now we have to do one that is by four feet wide. So this is five and a half by four feet. However, again, they said that this one is by halves as well. So if you want to keep going by halves until you count to four holes, you may do that. Um, but my advice um, is I would have changed this to halves as well. The thing is, <clears throat> there is nothing here. But remember, half just is your denominator. So then there is no type of a fraction next to it. So now you could just simply do um, the same thing. Two times four is eight plus zero is still eight halves. So if you want to know how many halves make up four, you could have done that. So, or you could have just done a half plus a half, that's one whole. So then keep going. This would be two holes and keep going. Or you could have said, all right, it's just going to be eight halves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is where it would end there. And then you would make a rectangle until these meet which is right there. So that is gonna be the area of it. Now they wanna know what is the area gonna come out to be? Well, I just changed this to an improper fraction or um, you could have just have done uh, four and a half times just four. And then this would be the one that you would have to change. Uh, this would be 10 plus one is 11 over two times four over one, which can you have that? Um, can you cross cancel anything? Yes, a two can go into four two times, and then this would be a one now. So then if you go across, it would be a one at the bottom, and 11 times two is 22. So how many 22s go into one? How many ones go into 22? It would be 22. So therefore, your answer is 22 square feet. Okay, and the last part of this is it says, um, Ruby conducted a survey and found out that five, six of her classmates have a pet and two thirds of those pets are dogs. What fraction of her classmates have dogs? So you're gonna do five, six have pets, but two thirds of those our dog, so you would have to multiply this. So what they wanna know is what you would have to do to solve this. Um, so they're, they're doing it a different way that is not needed. So you can just do it over here. And then you can say to yourself, okay, can anything cross cancel here? You could have done that, or you could have simply just gone straight across, which would have been 10 over 18. That is a perfect um, answer right there. Remember, you don't have to do simplest form, um, but you could have also have done it a different way and said, can anything be cross canceled? Yes, a two can go into six three times. So then this one would be five over uh, three times three is nine. So you could have said this or this, um, still the same thing. So five ninths or 10 eighteenths of her classmates had um, a pet that is a dog. All right, um, over here, um, it says Robbie is using the recipe below to make chicken noodle soup. He plans to make six batches of soup. He has two thirds teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, so um, what they want to know is write an expression that Robbie can use to determine how much black pepper is needed for six batches. So we have to come down here and look for black pepper. Okay, black pepper. What is needed to make just one batch is one eighth. So how am I going to figure out 
um, how much it is needed for six batches, well, then I would do um, one eighth times six. And that's all it wanted to know, just the expression. So that's what I would have to do to figure that out. Now it says, draw a model to show Robbie um, can find the product of this. You do not have to draw a model. You could just figure out what the product is. Uh, product, again, means answer to a multiplication problem. So in this case, all you had to do is you could just simply multiply this. So are they both in fraction formats? No, they are not. So then I can just go across um, six over eight. So you could say six eighths um, of a teaspoon. Or some kids could actually see, hey, that's not reduced. Um, a two can go into both of these, which you are absolutely right. Two can go into both six and eight. So you could reduce that down. How many twos go into six? Uh, that would be three. And how many twos go into eight? Uh, that would be four. So that is also the answer as well. So it says, does Robbie have enough black pepper for six ba batches of soup? And explain your reasoning. Now remember up here is what it was said, how much he has. He only has two thirds, but really he needs like either six eighths or three fourths, how you wanna look at that. Now, this is what he has. And he needs six eighths. So we need to figure out whether these are the same. Now, how to go about doing that? Um, I would change these to a common denominator. So um, if I wanted to change both a three and an eight to a common denominator to understand what is going on here, um, I could just do eight times three, which is 24. So I'm gonna change these all to 24 to see if we have, he has enough or not. So to get this to 24, I would times it by eight and this by eight. So eight times two is 16. So he has 16 24 but this is what he needs. Let's see if he has enough. So to change this, I would times it by three and this by three, that would be eight. 24. So again, he has 16 out of 24, but he really needs 18 out of 24. So does he have enough? And you should be saying no. Because um, he has 16 24, but needs 18 24 which is not enough. Okay, and that is the end of the review. Just send me pictures um, showing me that you did all of these and please make sure you are showing the work on these. And that's how you can get your points for the chapter seven review assignment. Okay, see you guys later, bye.